for you. All right. How about that? Is the audio back? We're good. All right. Uh, goodness gracious, it's full of technical adventures. I think that we're doing better now. Welcome to Craft Cocktails. I know most of you uh, know me from my uh, little uh, show that I do at Pink Fresh Studio. It's called The Craft Hour over there, and here it's called Craft Cocktails. You know, it started um, about two years ago now, believe it or not. And now uh, we're here and uh, we're hosting this little gig. Tonight I'm very well, I'm excited to welcome Simon Hurley of Simon Hurley Create. Um, it says that I have audio. I'm going to keep talking. Tristan, if you could just send me another message just to make sure the audio is back, I would appreciate it. Let's see. Freezing on and off. Let's see. Hang tight, everybody. Let's see if we can fix this real quick. How are we doing? Are we better? Are we better? Let's see. All right. I'm I'm hearing that we're back, which is good. You know, it's been a while. It's like riding a bike. Got to get back into it. We are here. Craft cocktails. Hope you have your craft cocktail of choice. Tonight, I'm not doing craft cocktails. I'm just doing a glass of wine um, because we have got to be serious. We're going to be watercoloring again. Tonight's special guest is Simon Hurley from Simon Hurley Create. And we're going to be taking a moment to enjoy his brand new release. I just want to remind you, if you would like to participate in the show, we are trying to get super fancy. If you would like to join Simon and myself, feel free to send us a link either on Facebook or Instagram. And I will, uh, I will. Uh, OK, we're good. People are saying we've got sound and I'll send you a link so you can join us in the green room and perhaps appear on camera and ask Simon um, and I some questions. Sound good? Without any further ado, let's see if we can get Simon Hurley here with us. Let's check in with him and see if he is able to join us again. This is going to be new, so I'm hoping that this will work. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my guest, Simon Hurley. Simon, are you in the show? I'm going to say no. He's not. Let's see. All right, let's see if we can get uh, Simon back into the show here. I'm here. Hi. Can you guys Hi. see me? Not yet. They can't see you yet. Hi. It's like you're you're like a special. Um, <laughs> let's see if we can fix it, though. Hang tight for just a second. What the heck? Hey, look, okay, it's I Simon. There he is. There go. <laughs> hey, friends. Hi, Simon. Welcome to the show. Let me fix some um, cameras uh, really quick um, and get you into um, each of the um, channels. All right. There we go. Hi, Simon. Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm so excited to be here again, Jeff. And we did one of the first craft cocktails together. And so now it's exciting to be back and do some crafting with you tonight. And I'm really excited to chat with everyone and, and watercolor with you. Yes, I agree. I have one more camera shot to fix and then folks, you'll see uh, Simon appear on both. So there we go. Uh, so yeah, that was a long time ago, though. It feels like it's been a while, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's definitely been a while. It's been a long year, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm definitely excited to be back. And, you know what? You're right. There. You appeared in the all-star show that we did uh, when we were just getting used to sheltering in place. We did two all-stars editions and you appeared on the very first one. Um, but you've appeared many times on my Instagram lives before we had all of this fancy YouTube channel stuff going on, right? Yeah, definitely. I encourage yeah. you. I encourage you to jump over here to YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you've definitely uh, made it a, a, a living for sure. Tell everybody what your average week is like when it comes to the amount of posting you like to do and what goes on behind the scenes in order to get contact content out to um, people that follow you. Yeah, it's a little bit crazy, but it's I graduated. You know, I try to get two or three videos out each week. Um, which has been a little difficult with the move, but I think I'm getting back into it now. Um, and I just like to share crafting tips, tricks, life hacks, and um, different things using my products as well, and testing out other people's products too. I think it's really important to check out all the things in the industry and st stay up to date on all that stuff. 
When it comes to your uh, video editing schedule, how quick can you turn out a video and do you have to plan ahead? Um, I was a big planner or started kind of planning my schedule and stuff like that before the whole world shut down and got all crazy. Um, so now I kind of stopped playing, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. Um, it was hard to plan because this year was so crazy where releases would just happen when we could get them out and um, distributors, you know, are a little bit difficult to get stuff from. And sometimes YouTube videos were a little bit hard to do as well with procs coming in. Um, and so I tried to get back onto a schedule now that things are becoming a little bit more normal. I think I turn them out usually in the same day or the next day. Got it. Uh, and when it comes to this release, are we finished for 2020 or do we have another release coming here in 2020? We have another release coming in 2020. Um, oh, so wow. So look for it November. Oh November, my gosh. Yeah. For some reason, I thought since you released a holiday one, we were kind of coming to the home stretch, but we've got one more coming in 2020. That's a really rigorous schedule. Have those deadlines um, caught you up as well. Have you learned how to deal with those deadlines? Yeah, it's been tons of fun. I've been learned kind of, I had to learn from the very beginning because we started when I was still in school. And so I learned then that that year, you know, I couldn't do as much because of school, kind of set aside some time where I draw just, you know, designing and drawing all my products. And that's been kind of a big deadline, like you said, too, but it's been a ton of fun to just kind of be creative. And that's one of my favorite aspects of it, actually, is just creating the stuff for people to create with. Awesome. And today you uh, showed us your temporary craft room and a brand new video that you released today. But tell us why it's just the temporary craft room. You've moved, so we're not seeing the familiar Simon Hurley studio that we're used to. Tell us what's going on in your life. Yes. So I moved to a new house here with my family. Um, it's been really awesome. And we are building a craft room in the downstairs, unfinished part of the basement. So we have to put up the walls and floors and all that. So um, it's going to take a little while, <laughs> about two months. And so I'm in this space for now. I'm really excited to finally have my craft room back. So now I can keep creating and making videos and stuff like that. But then I'll be moving into the other space afterwards. But this is really great to have this for now because I got lots of deadlines for the beginning of the year next year. So you got to make those deadlines happen. <laughs> sure, because there's no rest. I mean, you got to keep going and these releases keep coming, that's for sure. So before we move over to our desktop, what you was bet. this yeah. most what was this most uh, recent release all about? Yeah, so let's, do you want me to move over to the desktop and then sure, talk about let's it? let's do it. Let's do it. Perfect. All right, so this is kind of what I'm going to be watercoloring today. Can you guys see, Is it, let us know in the chat if it's a little bit blurry. I think it might be on our end, but I'm also looking at my phone and, it, and it's pretty clear. So, oh, I'm, I'm by myself here. Okay. Yeah, I, I <laughs> so will. So this release. I, um, keep going, my friend. I got to add you into the, I got to add your camera into the shot. Okay, perfect. So this release was kind of all over the place, but I really like doing that because usually in our releases, we give you a larger six by nine stamp set and then some other products to coordinate with it, like background stamps and stencils to coordinate. Um, and I like just doing one of a certain theme because I find you get, you know, a lot of versatility out of one whole set. So we did gnomes, which is so much fun for fall and all the different holidays. Let me zoom out quickly here. So you guys can see these stamp sets because they're quite large. So we have gnomes, Jeff showing you some of the background stamps. Um, I also did one for basketball. So I found that with, you know, the dude sets and things like that, I wanted to create some sets for and so this one is so much fun for anybody who loves basketball. And then we did a Halloween stamp set, which is just adorable. All these little kids and animals dressed up in their costumes with a bunch of fun sentiments along with it. And if you want a closer look, of course, you could check on the Ranger website. I think we left a link down below in the description um, with all of the different products you can check out. But then um, Jeff walked you through some of the stencils and background stamps, and we'll be working with some of the stuff today as well. But just a fun kind of fall holiday release. And Artie's back and he is dressed up for Halloween. Yes. Oh my gosh. It was so much fun. It's it's fun to bring him in the different sets. And so here he's in that um, basketball uniform doing a slam dunk. And then here he's uh, 
dressed up as a mummy for Halloween. So it's just fun to draw him in every set. And, and I love the little. <laughs> what was your um, inspiration for bringing Artie? How did you come up with, have you always been connected to bears? Um, so Artie, we actually found a drawing and he was one of my first drawings, I think from freshman year, it was a like beginner art class that we were doing. And I drew um, a little bear that looked exactly like this. And all my friends will tell you about it, um, that were in that art class. Um, and at first he was named Ted, <laughs> um, but it was a little too generic. So we uh, named him Artie and I've been drawing him in a lot of my art projects. And you'll see him if you go and look back at all my art projects you'll see him come up a lot and and so then i just it kind of made us to bring him into the crafting world and he was adorable yeah totally cute um so tonight i fell in love with uh your peel apart rubber background you kind of uh set us up for um peel aparts have become sort of a favorite in the industry tell us about why you wanted to do peel aparts in the first place yeah, definitely. So with Peel Arts, it was kind of this little um, idea of mine that I wanted, a, you know, I saw some different rubber stamp sets where they had the blank rubber and um, from Stampers Anonymous, Ted does such an awesome job. And he had like them cut out and you were meant to use them just as individual stamps. And so I thought of that and I was like, well, what if we just did that without any waste and we just had all of it be design and then some parts that were made to be cut out and can be individual stamps. And so Ted from Stampers Anonymous, who is absolutely amazing, um, you know, does this for us and, and it's no extra charge for the consumer. So it's the same price as a regular background stamp. But the cool part about them is they peel out. And so there's four in here that peel out and you get different flowers and leaves and things like that um, that you can use individually. So it's almost like you get, you know, another stamp set with your background stamp. And then of course you can place them back in and bend them a little bit to move them back together and then they go back into place. That's awesome. Um, so once again, everybody, we are playing with Simon Hurley Create Products tonight. This is the brand new release. I had not done it yet, so I invited Simon on the show. If you would like to join us, feel free to send me an instant uh, Instagram uh, DM and I'll be more, I can't talk tonight and I promise I've only had two sips of wine. Mm -hmm. I'll send you a private link that'll put you in a green room. I'll be honest with you, I am currently testing um, some new technology. As you can see, it's not necessarily going perfectly uh, for my other little gig. Um, and this is a brand new beta version. So thank you for your feedback. I'm seeing everybody's in the comments. Simon has always taught me everything about technology. So I'm so appreciative of him uh, trying out this uh, new uh, feature with me. All right, Mr. Simon, uh, I said I wanted to watercolor and you said, sure, but you better be ready because we got a lot to do. You went ahead and got us started. So if you don't mind, um, talk us through, you already got some work done. Let me show them what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use Nature Hike because I fell in love with these leaves. And which set are you using? I'm going to use the Playful Petals background stamp. And this one's another favorite of mine. I just love these two because they're just that fun kind of doodle style. And um, I stamped this down in Jet Black Archival ink. And then if you know anything about Jet Black Archival, it's a little bit longer. Um, and get the resist over it so that it'll hold in um, the inks and water when you add that to it. Simon, I don't know if you can see on your computer screen, maybe on your phone, um, I only have just a little bit left of your uh, cardstock. It's my favorite, so I keep it separate in this bag that it came in. But you were saying the other day in a video that you like how um, it watercolors, so I decided to use it tonight. Do you recommend that? Yeah, I mean, um, with detail watercolor like this, we'll, we'll test it out and see if it is um, really perfect. You can always use um, watercolor cardstock, and maybe you want to do that tonight. I'm not quite sure. Okay, a lot of times when I'm using my cardstock, um, when I use my cardstock, I like to dip it in and and you do watercolor techniques like that. Sometimes with detail watercoloring, it's not as good because it will kind of sink in a little bit more. But I'll, I'm watercoloring on my cardstock tonight, um, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. But you know, I love to use it for all different techniques and things like that. Great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to some um, watercolor uh, card um, stock tonight just to be um, just to make sure we're good. 
And uh, do you want to go ahead and um, give me just a little bit of room to um, emboss this really quick? Simon got his homework done first, everybody. So, <laughs> Simon, what fall colors do you think out of your uh, color line do you think that we should be using for tonight? Yeah, I mean, you could really use any color you want. For fall, I've loved using a little bit of Game Over. Um, I like traffic cone as well if you want to bring a couple of brighter colors in i do love guppy even though it's a little bit brighter um let's see i also love psych again it's a little bit brighter but you know that's my taste so yeah um, but even later gate very fall yes definitely um and then i also fake plant because it's a little bit darker green you can always bring in gur if you want and then one of my faves is, wow, I'm really just throwing all the colors out here. <laughs> Minty Fresh is really awesome too. And I'm gonna use that on the background um, and I'll show you that as well. It's just this cool kind of muted, um, almost neutral color, which I think is really awesome. Great, I'm excited, that's awesome. All right, so I am going to powder this down. You've gone back to a half shot there. So I just wanted to let you know. And uh, I'm going to uh, use some Bursa Mark and catch up to where you are, my friend. And some people are saying that my feed's a little pixelated. I apologize. There's there's not a ton we can do to fix it, but yes, I apologize to my friends. We were excited that um, the platform that I'm using uh, was going to offer an alternative to Skype, which I use on my other show. And it's proving that it does just the same problems, unfortunately, which is a little frustrating, but again, I'm so sorry. Simon, the good news is that they see you in your videos all the time. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. <laughs> so um, what colors did you decide to go for tonight? You are going to stay in the fall colors or no? Um, you know, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. I think I think I'll stick with some of the fall colors. I might mix some of the other brighter colors in, but I'll use some of the fall ones and then I'll share minty fresh for the background at the end too. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna use, whoops, I'm gonna hit the camera. Sorry about that. I'm gonna use Brutus, Brutus Monroe Gilded. For these oh, that gold is gonna look awesome on there. I didn't even think about doing gold. And the trick is, if I want to do like true watercolor, like proper, or if I want it to bleed out and over. That's what I've got to think about. Yeah, that's gonna look that's so to make so the palette of inks, I just oh that looks amazing. So to watercolor, I just take the ink pad and I smoosh it onto my craft sheet um, to make a little palette of inks. Yeah, that gold embossing powder is just beautiful. All right, my friend, here's the heat gun. Sorry about that, everybody, but you, we all like to watch it too. You know. Simon, you can uh, go ahead and get started, but I'd hate to keep you waiting because you were prepared. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna grab a little paintbrush and some water and a rag as well and get started. I'm not sure exactly what colors I wanna use. I might just make it kind of random. Almost done, everybody. Thank 
That is looking great. That gold is going to look so awesome with the fall colors and water coloring. Yeah, Christopher does such a good job with his Brutus Monroe um, embossing powder. It's just one of my favorites. Uh, your product is available at Brutus Monroe, yes? Yeah, you can buy um, a lot of the inks there and a lot of the stamps he'll get in as well. So yeah, definitely over at Brutus Monroe as well. Yeah, he's been awesome. So when you think about like everything that you've done to launch this brand, uh, would you think that it has been easier during a um, shelter in place, stay at home world of a pandemic? Or do you find that uh, you it's been a little more challenging? Very much so challenging, very much so. Um, it has been a crazy ride. And and I always say, you know, it's it's been a weird year to, to try to grow a brand because it's not in its established phase. It's very much so still growing. And so it it it's definitely having some growing pains for sure um, in the past little while because um, a lot of things are very diff liars right now and to make sure that we are able to keep in stock. So, um, you know, it's not always the prettiest um, behind the scenes and, and getting things done, but as a rainbow, trying to work as hard as we can together. And, and they've been amazing too, you know, working with me and working with, you know, the circumstances that we're being at home, um, to try to still be successful brand and have lots of launches, which is awesome. So these are my color swatches for your um, products. Uh, you were saying, um, what purple were you recommending one more time? You wanted Psych for sure, right? For fall? Yeah, I would bring in um, some orange. Um, I would do like Game Over, Traffic Cone, Guppy, um, Fake plant psych and defresh for fall but you can totally just look through this watch and what y'all love too awesome i just love coloring these flowers and it's so much fun to do these background stamps and and if you want to color them all in or if you want to dip it into inks you could totally do whatever you know So does the craft room and knowing that that's coming and everything that you're going to have to deal with, does that um, keep y'all up at night or has it been fun to design and figure it all out? Um, to be honest, we haven't really uh, gotten too much into it yet. We're, we're done from moving and really getting the house to be um, in it. Um, and so I think kind of having this temporary craft room has allowed us to just get ready for things for winter and make sure the house is perfect before we go into winter and then be time. So we haven't really been designing it too much, but I think it's going to involve a lot of the same furniture and then just bringing it into that room and, and kind of redesigning um, the background and things like that. But that'll pretty much be it. I just think it's amazing that you uh, recreated something just to keep getting content out to us. That is crazy to me. Um, even the small yeah, it's, it's, studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been cool, kind of funny, but it was very needed because we we knew that we had, you know, we got a lot of deadlines and and also I don't want to just leave my channel abandoned for for the couple months that we're uh, kind of moving in this transitioning phase. So yeah, it's been it's been fun to kind of um you know get get this craft room up and going and then be able to film videos. I I don't think they're gonna have as as nice of a background and you saw the wall and whatever, but it's, it's for me, it's more just being real and showing up than having everything look beautiful every single shot. Yeah, I think that uh, your fans have started to appreciate that about you. It's real and you've always promised to kind of keep that reality going. You were talking to me um, this weekend about the fact that uh, being real with your um, fans and consumers is important to you. Yeah, totally. I just started um, doing a little texting thing with them where I've got my own little phone number that they can um, text and it's, it really is me responding um, and I get to go through and, and really chat with all of them. Um, it was a decision that I that I made because this year it was my goal to go out and, and do lots of teaching and things like that and really connect with everybody in that way. And I think it's a lot more personable and a lot more fun to go see everybody in person than always just, you know, watching a screen. And um, 
you know, that was quickly shut down with everything that happened in the world. And so it was, it was a uh, decision that I made to just, you know, have this number and then be able to chat with people and not miss anything. And so it's a, it's a good line to um, have people reach out to me on and also to keep everyone informed because I know um, Instagram and YouTube aren't always the easiest. And so to get information that way from me and just make sure you always know what's going on is, is kind of fun with that number. Right. And the very first thing I asked Simon, I'm like, do I have to switch phone numbers? And your point was, no, this was, this is just an extra line on my phone, uh, which helps you connect to so many more people. And I know that you have enjoyed getting to know everybody and people are really responding. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is an extra line. Um, so everyone can say that I wasn't hacked. So yes, this is just an extra line for everybody to reach out to me on, which is so much fun. And yeah, like you said, a lot of people have been responding well to it. And it's just such a great outlet for people to be able to reach me right away because I don't always answer DMs and I don't always go into Facebook Messenger. And so this is just a way that, you know, is a surefire way of pretty much almost always getting a response. Yeah. I got to tell you, for someone who's fearful of watercoloring, it is so much easier when you have the weld embossing walls that are blocking you in. It's been great. All right, yes, Ty, I'm, definitely, definitely. And I've got to go wet down a rag really quick. So I'm going to put the desktop strictly on you and I'll be right back. Does that sound good? That way they, Sounds can, good. they can catch up with you. Yes, ask any questions. Yay for being real and showing up, Debbie says. Yeah, it's been it's been awesome to just do that and, and focus on videos and uh, set up this fun space for you guys. Aw, okay, I'm seeing all your guys' comments. I honestly had not looked up for a little while, so um, this is so awesome that you guys are tuning in tonight and, and um, showing up. So if you have any questions, let us know in the chat. I'm just going in here and watercoloring. You guys have probably seen this from me a million times, but it's always fun to do some watercoloring. Simon, so I'm just going in with my inks. I'm back, bud. Yeah. Uh, what red would be great for like a Canadian um, red maple leaf? Um, hmm. I would either use beasting or game over, but game over is probably a little bit darker when you water it down. Got it. I'm going to go with beasting then. Beasting it is. I'm almost looking like yeah, I'm, I'm just... creating a Christmas card. <laughs> <But> it, <laughs> yeah, with all the reds and, and greens. But we, we will get the uh, orange in there in a second, everybody. Definitely. And it's um, been fun to, to have a fall release this year. Last year, we didn't do all the different, you know, seasons and holidays, but I just think it's so much fun to, to be able to include all these different things in your card making. Justin Frechette, hey, crafty dudes. Justin, are you a dude crafter? Do I know your handle? Is that a new name to you, Simon? Um, yes, I think I might've seen him in a couple of comments. That's so awesome. I love when guys get into crafting and, and, you know, we've always kind of talked about that and really encouraged that over the past year. Yeah. Look at that. Julie, Julie, you remember, I forgot my own gimmick. She's putting on the wall dudes craft too. That's right. Whenever a dude crafter enters the room, typically it's Simon who enters the room, um, but he's on the show tonight, so he can't enter the room. <laughs> Uh, we have to put on the wall Dudes Craft 2. So hashtag Dudes Craft 2. Julie, thanks for remembering. What a host I am. I'm forgetting all my own, uh, old gimmicks. In fact, we have a word of the night that we need to introduce, right, Simon? Oh, gosh. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. So uh, every time we hear a signature word in the show, we all have to take a sip of our drink. But we know that we have an 18-year-old here that uh, loves his uh, Dr. Pepper but he changed it up on us tonight. Simon, what are you drinking tonight? We got a Sprecher root beer tonight, only for the sheer fact that we ran out of Dr. Peppers. But yes, oh. we are drinking Sprecher root beer tonight. What is Sprecher root beer? Is that a Wisconsin thing? Uh, I, I think it's all over. I'm not sure though. Okay, got it. But it's not like a hometown situation that you know of. Um, I don't... I don't think so. Uh, well, we did wait. We did visit the thing, so it might be like based here. 
Yeah, I think I it sounds very Wisconsin branded and name. And you said it very confidently, like you know what it is. So that made me feel like it was more a hometown situation. Maybe it uh, is. Okay, Susan, maybe it might be. Susan was saying you could uh, blend bee sting and one of the oranges, Jeff. Uh, that could uh, really um, up it. I will, I will do that. I'll add in a little bee sting here on these maple leaves. Yeah, that's what I do. I blend the, the reds and oranges. That's such an awesome suggestion. And that's what I do. And just, it really makes the leaves look so cool um, when you add, you know, different tones to them together. Yeah, part of me thinks I will never be brave when it comes to blending, but I've got to start stepping out of my zone. Uh, last uh, week on uh, my Pink Press Studio show, um, we had a professional watercolor teaching me how to watercolor flowers. And uh, it turned out pretty good, but um, it was her guiding me with color blends that made it all work. Um, but I'm Yeah, I mean, with me, I just really fake it till I make it. Um, I, I've never been the best at watercoloring. I think watercoloring with inks definitely makes it a little bit easier. Like with my line of inks, it's been super easy for me to really pick up watercoloring uh, easily and, and just have fun with it. There's not too much stress with it. Um, but for me, it's like even at classes and stuff, I, I kind of teach some tips and I've done some videos on, you know, tips for really making it a little bit easier. But I mean, I just kind of let people go for it and kind of run wild. And if they have questions, then I'll come over and try, try to guide them. But I think it's such a you know, unique thing on you find kind of how much water works for you and it's different for everybody. So um, everybody wants to know what word we chose. Well, I think that Simon is synonymous with using a particular word a lot in his videos. I would love to see if anybody agrees. What Simon fans out there can tell me what Simon's word of choice that you see in a lot of his videos. What would you say that it is? He says this word all the time. Let's give it a second and see if uh, uh, the people in the show can, to, can uh, let us know. So uh, put it up on the comments if you know what word we should pick tonight, and then we'll get to it, and then we'll add it back in. All right, I'm going to add in some traffic cone to my red maple leaves here. Wish me luck, everybody. Yes, that's going to look awesome. It definitely All right, and if you guys have any questions, leave them in the chat too. We'll, we'll kind of chat together, and we'll answer the questions together. How have you been during quarantine, Jeff? Um, you know, it has been an adventure. I uh, started this little brand at the top of my furlough from uh, Walt Disney World, and that was uh, kind of occupying my professional brain and heart, and it was a great distraction for me. Uh, Dan and myself took it really seriously, um, which I love um, that we did. Um, we believe that we can all contribute in order to kind of make it better for everybody. Um, and so uh, late June was when I got invited to reopen Walt Disney World as we restarted the National Basketball Association, the NBA, which um, people don't uh, really realize uh, that it was Disney that brought back the NBA to sports uh, on ESPN. So it's sort of weird to know that um, I didn't return back to my old job. I started back with... Um, doing work for all of the NBA bubble. I don't know if you heard, but we um, created the world's first athletic bubble where um, all the athletes, the pro athletes, were quarantined inside of a safe haven of Walt Disney World. Not a bad place, right? If you're going to be right. I, I think that's so awesome that you guys were able to do that. And I think my, my brother is definitely happy as well that that's, that's still going on this year. Yeah. <laughs> We're in our final. Uh, we thought that the games were going to end. And believe me, friends, I didn't know anything about sports. So, uh, oh, and by the way, everyone, where I'm now able to look in the comments, Simon, they have nailed the word of the night. Everyone knows what oh, the word yes. of the night is. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly gets, <laughs> Kelly, you get a half a point because he does say dude and dudettes at the, at the top of his videos now. Uh, but the word is awesome. Yes, that's right. That's tonight's drinking word. Uh, Simon will drink his uh, root beer and I'll drink my wine and I hope you at home uh, join us. I love that you all love Simon so much and that you know what his word of the night is. That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it is awesome. So there you go. 
And uh, thanks, Susan. See, you're the one that told me how to get that uh, maple leaf back under control. That's good. Yes, yeah, Simon, the, um, the, uh, the, the adding of the orange really did make it pop, which is awesome. I um, love that everybody knew the word. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, uh, love your front door for the fall. So Justin, that must mean you follow me. And I would like for uh, us to reconnect. So I hope that you send me a direct message so that I um, re-remember who you are. I'm glad that you like the front door. We take seasonal decor here at my house very seriously. Um, you know, you know, Simon, I don't know if you remember, have you known me long enough that I do a pumpkin pail uh, tree with a bunch of pumpkins in the tree? Have you ever, did you know that I did that? back in the day or last year? No, I, I did not know you did that. Yeah, so we have this big uh, tree in the front yard and I get pumpkin pails from um, from Target, the ones that kids uh, um, add all their candy to. And so um, <laughs> I just buy like 40 of them and I suspend them in the tree and light them up so that when you drive up to our house, there's a bunch of jack-o'-lanterns in the tree. It's really a beautiful look. Um, that's awesome. So yeah. This year was the first year that my friends at Target did not have any. So um, ah, I have no pumpkin. No. Yeah. I think some of my followers have seen that. You can check my archives. They're definitely, um, I definitely uh, have shown you guys uh, all those pumpkin pails. But I did add the garland back to the front of the house. Thanks everybody for uh, rooting me on and enjoying those. I always appreciate your comments. All uh, the rest of October, I'm going to be showing you guys uh, the uh, house, the decor that I do here for the Halloween. So I did a teaser photo today. I don't know if anybody saw that, but. Jeff, I have a question. Yeah. I want to know how you came up with the name Loveberg from Lindbergh, because I saw that on your door. Yeah. And so, yeah. the Loveberg Farms, I thought that was really just a fun and creative name. Yeah. So, um uh, first, shout out to uh, Ian Garland for doing uh, my my doors for me. He always does such a good job. Um, folks, I will tell you that the um, it's looking a little paint by number on the camera, but I promise in person and after I blend some more colors like y'all are having me do, I'm currently on psych. Um, I think that I think we'll start to see some um, colors. So uh, I need a tip either from Simon or someone in the comments. What should I blend with psych to get some dimension? Susan, you did some um, blend it time. with blend it with fake plant, and you'll get a really cool blend. Okay. Um, look at you. You just know your product so well. You know what it does. Uh, so love. Yeah, you can either so... do. Go ahead. Oh no, you're all good. Keep going. <laughs> um. So, uh, Dan's last name has love in it. And so uh, Berg is Lynn Berg. So just like any Hollywood couple, we blended our last names to be Loveberg. So that oh, that's awesome. Our two last names blended together. And so I every, did not know that, but that is a great that's a great way to do that. Yeah, every Christmas and um, so we do it for Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. We open a fake farm called Loveberg Farms, and we either sell Christmas trees, <laughs> carrots and eggs, or now pumpkins. People get a kick out That's of That's so much I've... fun, and I love that you use that as a, a fun way to decorate your house. Nobody's ever knocked on the door, Simon. Don't worry. No one's ever tried to buy pumpkins, Christmas trees, or um, eggs from me. <laughs> So Simon, I got to tell you, when I saw this cling stamp, I was I was dreaming of doing something like this. So I'm so excited to do it tonight. Have you um, been able to play with that cling with uh, your release, or is this a uh, um, first time you've been able to really do something with it? Yeah, I was able to kind of play with it um, when we first released it and started filming a couple videos. Um, and I did all the samples at the beginning, but I haven't been able to to get into a craft room. So this has been fun to kind of sit down with you tonight. And, and also, you know, I've had this room for her like one or two days and I've been crafting it up with this release since, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty new thing to be able to do this stuff. 
Uh, so what color did you want me to use with um, Psyche? You can either throw in um, fake plant or tropical tango. Either one of those will be a cool mix, but I think fake plants will give you the look you want for fall. Okay. Put some green in that yellow, says Nikki. Orange in that yellow. We've got we got a lot of uh, requests. I've got some traffic cone that I could do as well. Such awesome crafters. You know, friends, I never pretend to think that I am an expert. I, I've always loved uh, the fact that you all can help me along the way. I appreciate that. So we'll do some green. Oh, yeah, I love when they suggest. Say it again, bud. I love when they suggest different color combinations and, you know, how they, if they liked the card or not or what they would change in the comments. I just think it's so much. Simon, do you think that uh, you would have had this ability to teach classes or uh, talk to the camera and demo um, if you weren't raised in a YouTube generation? Did you grow up just uh, falling in love with YouTube? Where did you get your confidence to uh, present? Presenting is different. People think that it's just, oh, you must you must like to act. And it's like, no, that actually doesn't mean that I'm gonna be a good presenter. Um, what, what gave you that confidence? Yeah, for me, it's um, like you said, I've grown up in this generation where it's so normal for people to become YouTubers. And, you know, I think if you look at statistics of if you ask younger kids what they want to be now, like I forgot what it was, but a large percentage is they want to be a YouTuber. And that was always me too. I picked up my parents' camera ever since I was really little and would either fake film um, videos or like always talk to myself and pretend like I was filming a tutorial. And so that's where kind of my love of YouTube came. And I was always just inspired by these people, but never thought that I would start a YouTube channel. And then um, one day I just picked up my camera and started filming myself crafting and uploaded that to YouTube. Um, and that's kind of where it all started. I have to be honest, at the very beginning, I was horrible um, at presenting and filming. Um, and even to this day, I would say, um, I've gotten a lot better at talking to the camera and teaching and even doing in-person teaching. But I remember even like three years ago, I was terrified to even go to Creativation. Um, so it's very different presenting, um, like you said, kind of teaching that whole thing and, and getting really good at talking to a camera and talking to people and interacting. But for me, like you said, it, it came a little bit more naturally since I've been doing it since I was so young, even just like faking, pretending to have a YouTube channel. Right. But I've had um, only one chance at Creativation to uh, be taught by you. And I just, um, of course, I'm always impressed by you and I'm glad to call you friend and fellow dude crafter. And of course, you teach me something all the time. The, um, the tables have definitely turned. You would think that me as your elder, I would teach you stuff. But um, <laughs> what I loved is that you're te teaching and I know you were raised by a teacher. Um, but that's not easy to do, to confidently present with expertise and you um, had a confidence about doing that. Um, by the time I saw you in Creativation, had you been teaching a lot of classes or was that still new to you? Um, not a ton. I had taught, let me switch it to my um, front facing camera too. Um, I had taught a few classes um, and I still haven't taught a lot because of everything that's been going on in the world. And um, But I think for me, it's kind of come a little bit like, Teaching to a camera is very similar as in person. You just kind of person. Um, but for me, I get nervous every single time before a release, before a class, before creativation. Um, you can ask my mom, you can ask the team sitting in the room like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, we're starting this again. But I think the day that I, the day that I'm not nervous is the day that I shouldn't be doing this anymore because nerves mean you care. And that's what I've learned about this so much is it's like, if I'm nervous, I, I I care so much about either the release that I'm putting in or the class that I want to make sure everybody's having an amazing time. I think when you get too comfortable with it is when it, it becomes, you know, not the best. So right. I really just care every single time so much. That's so great. Oh, I love it. Looking good. Yeah. You know, I like, I like something gilded and uh, Brutus Monroe plus your colors do a great job. I've always said this, and I just am not just saying it because you're on the show tonight. I really would love for y'all to really get to know Simon's ink pads. His dye ink pads uh, blend unbelievably well. They saturate color. 
but they really make a person who's not confident in blending feel really confident in blending. Um, and now we're seeing, of course, that their watercolor techniques still remain rich and colorful as well. All right, folks, what is an ex another color that I should add to this uh, little combo of fall colors? Should we go a little darker? What other fall colors should I add? You can throw in Gur for a little bit of brown for the that. Okay. Um, you could also throw in a little bit of, hmm. um, I don't know. <laughs> I would do, I, I love doing the oranges and reds and, and throwing greens in there too. Let's add a little bit of Gur. We've got some acorns to deal with here. Don't forget, folks, um, I'm ready to tr try a new um, technology with putting you in the show with Simon and I. Simon and I would be happy to stop crafting. We do this all the time. We'd love to talk to you. So if you feel like you would like to appear on camera, uh, just send me an instant message or a direct message on any of the socials, and we will connect you to the show live. As everyone runs away, Simon. Everyone's like, nope, not doing that. <laughs> Yeah, that girl looks great. Look at that. That's awesome. Yeah, that looks great on there. Karen Kay says she thinks she first started following you after Catherine Pooler mentioned once or twice and have loved watching him grow up. You've definitely grown up in front of us. Uh, you had braces at one time, right? I didn't follow you back then. You were I was still acting at the time. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I really grew up on camera and you'll see pictures of me where it's from like when I was 12 or 13 and I had that YouTube channel then and it was very bad, very cringy back then. Um, but yes, I've very much so grown up on, on screen and, and it's been so much fun growing up in, in front of everybody and on this industry and even like for myself, all of my videos to look back on and be like, okay, I remember what I was going through during that time. Um, it's kind of funny. It's, it's kind of cool that I you know, had that time on the internet. Amy wants me to add some burgundy. I agree. That would be a brand new color. Amy, let me finish these acorns really quick and then I will add in some burgundy. Maybe Simon can help me know which one would be great for that. Um, a little bit of game over would be a good color for that. Game over it is. Great. We'll add in game over. Good job. Kel. Um, hey, Kel Bates is here. Um, I see, I'm seeing everybody. I will tell you that every time I watercolor, it's a little harder to interact with the comments. Um, but I appreciate everybody coming back to the premiere of, um, of uh, Craft Cocktails. It's been a while. I've forgotten how to do this. Simon. Um, yeah, it is difficult to look up and see all the comments, definitely, <laughs> when you're so focused on the watercoloring. It is. Helen, I see you as well. Helen, you always come to both of my shows. Thank you so much. Um, you followers are so fantastic. Um, let's yeah, see. they're awesome. We missed, I think we missed a question. Let's look back. Uh, I'm sure I missed. Um, so Debbie recommends paint splatters. We can definitely do that too. Um, Kel has been doing paperwork all day. Uh, Cordelia says, no camera for me. Thank you very much. Carol says, Simon, how do you think you're getting more exposure now during the pandemic or before things were normal? So the, do you think that um, the public has been able to interact and get to know you better thanks to this pandemic? Or do you think that it's actually um, been a detractor from you getting to um, meet your followers and uh, really get your name out there? Um, I'm going to tell you one thing. You're, you're not seeing me in person. So I, I think I miss that part of it. I really do. I miss going and teaching even just the few times that we've done it. Me and my mom just loved connecting with everybody in person. And we did an event at Ranger. And I think that's the one we just fell in love with is we just spent like a weekend with everybody there and just crafting all day with, you know, my fans and followers. And it's just so fun meeting everybody in person. So I got to say, it's definitely different than that. Um, then, you know, meeting everybody online is very different than seeing everybody in person. But, but I do have to say that texting, like I had mentioned earlier, that's been a great way to connect more personally. Um, but I just love, I love what I've been doing, putting out videos um, and getting your, all your responses and chatting in the comments with you guys and getting to talk on Instagram too. So I don't know, I don't know how it's really affected. I haven't really looked into that. Um, 
but I gotta say it's it's been a cool time even just having everybody at home and at the beginning of it I know Jeff we were doing um, lots of live streams together and and um, things like that to kind of keep everybody together and I think that was a really fun thing to do as well yeah it was um definitely very uh, in in order to try zoom like uh, calls and uh, I had wanted to jump on this bandwagon of introducing uh, more of the industry if you will and um, hosting shows before the pandemic but unfortunately the pandemic has made it sort of the thing that everybody does like you can't find cameras you can't find the equipment that I need because everybody is moving toward this platform which has made it a little more difficult to um, be original because I feel like everybody has kind of jumped into this. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, if you want to see a fun night, uh, check out uh, two episodes of Craft Cocktails All-Stars Edition. Um, Simon signed up for my first episode and um, we had a fun time. We play a lot of fun parlor games and we get to know um, a lot about Simon, like that he's totally okay with Crocs, even though I don't agree i'm never gonna i am not okay with crocs <laughs> He's not i was like so young when i wore he them was young but i like teasing him i i try to i, I pretend like he wears them at home still but he i even had i even had the disney giblets in it just just to uh, support you jeff yes thank you so tell everybody about that uh talk about a memory you and i and mama and papa hurley we're in a big planning session for an oh, awesome yeah. experience. And yeah. then the world broke open in front of us, right? Yes, we were literally on the road trip. We were in Alabama, picked up my brother, um, and we were headed off to Florida to go visit Jeff and go to Disney and um, have a nice, fun vacation. And uh, little did we know the whole world was going to shut down um, that day. And so we got an RV or like a little uh, U-Haul, packed my brother up and went home. So it was it was a little sad we had to cancel that trip, but we'll have to do it sometime in the future. Um, but yes, I definitely missed out on that fun, fun vacation. Yeah, um, I, I will say, you know, uh, Papa Hurley is a papa, so he has analytical thought and worries about things. And I can remember him specifically asking, uh, you know, should we come? You know, do you think that we'll, should we give this a try? And at the time, none of us really knew any better, right? We didn't know how to answer the question. And so we held out a lot of optimism. Um, but yeah, uh, Justin wants to know, Jeff and Simon, what is one craft item that you could never live without? Um, I always like to say that I waited way too long to swatch color out things. I used to just get, um, ink pads and I didn't I always trusted the color on the label but the label can only go so far I mean it's not fair to any manufacturer to try to duplicate a perfect um, look of what the ink will look like on paper um, so when I was um, out of work for a little while there I had swatched all of my colors and here's my example of Simon's and it really does help you understand what the inks look like because we're not gonna know them as well as the designer. Simon should know his inks, but we may not. Uh, so I would say I would uh, have swatched out a lot sooner. Um, from a product perspective, um, I would say um, the Tim Holtz scissors as well as the scissors that Simon introduced us to, these Fiskers here. Um, so yeah, those would be mine. Simon, what would you say? You've answered this a lot on video, right? Yes, I have lots of videos showing all my favorite products, but uh, if I had something that I couldn't live without, it would for sure be the Misty. Um, and that's the most boring answer in the entire world, I gotta say. Um, but I have never been amazing at stamping, and so that's always really helped me out, and I just love the cool different techniques you could do with it, too. Um, and I gotta say, I never really, you know, I stopped swatching things, but, but you said it perfectly there. It's like, once you start creating your own products, you, of course, should know them well enough. So, yes, that is why I stopped swatching inks and stuff like that. But that is such a great recommendation to do. It's very helpful. Simon, you uh, recently uh, connected uh, with something uh, that I posted um, about uh, the, the world of having street smarts and educational smarts. 
and uh, that really resonated with you. Why did that hit home for you personally? What did you learn? Yeah, I think for me, it's, um, so I stopped at high school, haven't gone to college yet, and um, you gonna be needing it. <laughs> and not in the way that, um, I don't think I'm smarter than everybody else. In fact, I know that I'm not. Um, and, you know, for me, it was. Oh, you're breaking up just a little bit. Um... This quote, like, there are, everybody's good at something. And that's what I've learned is, you know, once you put your energy and focus towards what you're great at, you're going to do really great and succeed. And so a lot of times in high school, people would be like, well, why don't you play sports, Simon? <laughs> like, why don't, why don't you play sports? Why do you just make crafts at home? And it's like, well, I was over here building a business for myself because it was something that I knew was really good at. And I knew I was going to succeed. I didn't feel need to put my time into sports because I knew I wasn't good at it. And it just right. gave, it gave another person, you know, the opportunity to, to do sports and, and thrive in that. Um, and I think that's just played true for my whole life. Um, and so for me, the education route was just something that I didn't see would be super helpful, at least at this point, um, for art and things like that, because I think art is so subjective that it really shouldn't be taught in a way. You just kind of have to learn it. Um, and learn what works for you and not what works for everybody else. So that's kind of, yeah, I definitely resonated with that where it was um, very important for me to just focus on what I was good at and not listen to everybody who was telling me otherwise. Sure. My friend, we're almost at two minutes to the hour. Let's bring it back to our front facing cameras now that we see your beautiful flowers and let's answer some questions and call it a night. I can't believe it has flown by. We got a lot of I'm coloring good. done. Um, so, uh, yeah, if yeah you have a question, I cannot believe it's been an hour already. That's awesome. <laughs> so if you um, have some questions for Simon and myself, be sure to uh, leave us a comment. I'm also checking on Instagram. So if anybody is connecting there, um, you are more than welcome to either join us in the show or I can answer or ask your question um, here. Um, Simon, are you watching anything cool on television right now? Um, I, hmm, I watched Umbrella Academy. Okay. That's a really good show. Um, I didn't watch season two yet, so no spoiling it for me, but that's really fun on Netflix. Um, it's just a great show. I think it was very well done. Um, other than that, I've just been watching YouTube videos, catching up on a little Jennifer McGuire and uh, watching some other YouTubers as well. But uh, YouTube's pretty much what I watch on a daily basis. Sure, sure. And uh, there's so much content out there, my goodness. Uh, Michelle, I got mm -hmm. your comment. I will make sure that I try Crown Me and Game Over to add some of the smaller leaves that I have. I also want to heat set just a little bit more. For those of you on the um, close up, you probably saw that the powder was a little bit loose. So I'll go back and heat it up, dry some of this off and keep adding some color layers as well. Simon uh, was very generous to give us a fun coupon. So be sure to check the description of this uh, video and a link because as you know, uh, linking uh, to the, um, the uh, Simon, do this for me. You're so much better at this. By utilizing these links, it helps you, right? Yes. So if you use the links in the description, it's going to help me out. So thanks, Jeff. Um, he allowed me to put those links down in there. Um, and so, yes, if you click on those links, I'll get a small portion of, you know, whatever you spent. No extra cost to you, but it just helps support me. Um, and that's a link to my page at Ranger, so you can check out the new release there that we used tonight. You can check out all the inks and a lot of the old releases as well. And I do want to just make a note, <laughs> don't email Ranger's customer service. We know that some of the products are out of stock. Um, we are doing our best to refill them and restock and give you guys an amazing experience. It's sometimes very difficult, even with inks and stuff like that, to get all the supplies we need to make the different products. And so we're working on getting everything back in stock. Simon, can you hold your card up? Because when I was coloring, I didn't get a chance to see your uh, finished product and that camera would be great. That is amazing. This is a man who understands his color. Look at that. It's such a comparison to the um, to the fall colors that I did, which is good. Simon, um, do yeah, you know, I know that you have Mama Hurley. We have a Mama Hurley question that uh, we've got to ask too, but this is my fall. Do you know that my sweet mother, Miss Sally, uh, just texted me here on the computer and said, 
um, have you complimented Simon on how fantastic his card looks? And she would be right, I have not done that. So I am still at age 46, getting notes from my mother on how to do a television show. <laughs> but Simon, Why, I would you, have Ms. said Sally. that no matter what. But since both of our mothers are being featured right now, uh, uh, we had a question about how Mama Hurley is dealing with the move. She has uh, the lake house plus this one. She's got to be the CEO of the house. She's got to be your manager. So how is, they wanted to know how she's dealing. How is she doing? Yes, she has kind of stepped down from social media now. So she is not doing all of that for me anymore. Um, so she stepped down from that. It's been a nice break for her to not have to worry about, you know, responding to comments and all the social media and stuff like that. But she's still going to do traveling with me and, and all of that when that all picks back up. Um, but yes, yeah, she has been doing good. I think this past week has been great for all of us. We finally got to kind of settle down. There's still a lot more projects that need to be done, but I think we're all kind of relaxed and settled. The house is now sold. Um, so we are now just fully inside of this and there's no more stress um, on selling a house during COVID. But um, yeah, we've all been settled down and I think we really love this place. So it's been awesome. And that's, that's the only house. Her that's phase. the only she, house you've ever uh, lived in, right? So that was was it hard to say goodbye to your old house? Um, surprisingly, not. Okay. I don't know. I my my friends asked too if I was gonna like have a hard time um, saying goodbye to it, but I don't know. We had lived there for um, I think twelve years. It it was an amazing house. I loved it, and at first I didn't want to move. So maybe it was a little bit difficult. But I mean, at the end process, I wasn't incredibly sad to to say goodbye to it. I think the, the family makes up the house. And so I think having everybody here just kind of makes new memories here and, and creates an awesome space. Everyone is loving the fact that we are two gentlemen that respect our mothers. Valerie, I know you were raising your kid to do that. And Amy, that's right. Chief Executive Mom, CEMs, that's exactly what they are. Mm -hmm. And Susan, yes, I did. I, this is week two of me watercoloring, which is good. Um, and see, mom, you're getting a lot of shout outs in the comments as well. Mama Hurley always does. She does such a good job dealing with uh, uh, you putting her on video all the time. Maria, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us in the show. Simon, where can people find you? Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Inclips. It's I-N-K-L-I-P-S-E. But you should be able to find it just by searching Simon Hurley. And Simon Hurley on YouTube um, and all different places like that. And then if you want to find my product line, you can click the link down in the description below. It's called Simon Hurley Create, and it's a collaboration with Ranger. That's fantastic. Simon Hurley, you've always been such a good friend and so supportive of me. Even when the technology is a mess, you stick in there and you help because you remember what it was like back in the day. Thanks for joining me for Craft Cocktails, buddy. Yeah. I'll see you offline, okay? All right, yep. everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. Bye, Have a good night. Friends, thanks so much for joining me for another Craft Cocktails. It was a re-premiere episode. It was sort of like getting on a bike, but it still took some time to get used to. Be sure to leave comments, connect with me, and we hope to get Craft Cocktails started up again. And if you follow me with Pink Fresh Studio, don't forget that you can see me on the Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. We'll be announcing that Callie Pearson will be joining me next Saturday. That's less than a week from now, where we'll be doing some brand new products with Pink Fresh Studio. So um, before I go, I also want to tell you that my friends over at Simon Says Stamp have done an amazing new release. It's called the SSS Make Merry, and I'll give you a sneak peek. Here is a fun little shaker card for thankful, and then another thankful shake, shaker card that I did. I did shakers and watercolors all in the same week. I'll uh, make sure that I put those up on my uh, Instagram channel. Uh, tomorrow. So they'll premiere tomorrow as we uh, continue with Simon Says Stamp. So thanks to them for another awesome release as well. All right, friends, thanks so much for joining. I will uh, get this back in tow and we will have another great craft cocktails in coming weeks. Have a great evening, everybody, and a good week. See you soon.